Hey guys, it's Dylan. I'm here with Kobe, the lead brewer of Slow Brew in San Luis Obispo. We just finished shooting our production scale video with the Blood Orange Craft Puree. We're gonna be doing a little bit of Q&A with Kobe, get some insight and info, kind of get some answers to the questions that we get all the time at Amoretti. One question we get all the time is how we can add our fermentable sugar-based products. So that would be Craft Puree, Compound, Artisan, Swirl product lines that have fermentable sugars, how can we add those during fermentation, when and how? So the process will definitely differ from brewery to brewery. However, one way that we've had a lot of success with it is adding it towards the tail end of fermentation, usually like one degree Play-Doh or so above the end. And we would normally add it while just going up to the top of the fermenter and dumping it in. So there's put a little bit of positive pressure on the tank, dump it right in through the top port, let the yeast eat through all those sugars and still get that nice flavor. Okay, so oh. with a thicker base product like Compound or Artisan, mm -hmm. which we use today, what's the best way to get the Artisan to kind of, if you're adding it in fermentation, it sounds like at the top yeah. of the tank, mm -hmm. what's the best way to get that evenly distributed throughout the um, fermenter? So prior to adding it, we like to soak the buckets in super hot water to really get them nice and loose. Um, we'll give it probably five to 10 minutes with like 180 degree water, shake it up really well to make sure it's nice and homogenous inside. And then we put pressure on the racking arm just lightly so that while you're dumping it into the tank, it'll help bubble it and rouse it through the tank. Okay. And it'll evenly homogenize. Okay. So. And that's a long process? It happens uh, no, it doesn't take too long. Um, normally, if we do one bucket, we can get it done with prep and everything in 15, 20 minutes. Okay. So. Pretty quick. So today we use the drum of blood orange craft puree. We fuse the beer kind of going from fermentation to the bright tank. Mm -hmm. uh, if that was the artisan, which is obviously a bit more thick than the craft puree, what would be the best way to make sure the artisan drum, you know, 580 pound artisan drum, how would we make sure that's kind of getting thoroughly mixed and blended into the bright tank? The way that we do it with our blood orange, we set up a rig from the fermenter going through a pump into the bright tank. Okay. We push the beer from the fermenter into the bright while simultaneously pulling the puree, or which this time would be the artisan, out of the drum in line going into the bright tank and we do it at a slow enough rate that it mixes in throughout the entire process and will homogenize evenly. Okay, so the slow rate would kind of compensate for the thickness of the artisan. Yeah, okay. exactly. Okay, yeah. so I guess the artisan, very similar usage, straight in line from mm -hmm. fermenter to bright tank through that, we said it was a pump? Yeah, okay. yeah. We use a centrifugal pump. You can use a diaphragm pump if you have one, but they're not near as common, at least everywhere I've been, they haven't been. Okay, and that same method, whether it was the craft puree today mm -hmm. or artisan, if it was a 55 pound bucket, which we do for the craft puree or 60 pound bucket for the artisan. Yeah. Same kind of idea of mixing it in line going from- Exactly. Back. Yeah, the goal is really just to mix it nice and slowly. You don't want to put it all in way too early or put it all in way too late because it might not homogenize, especially if you're doing a really big amount. Those okay. tanks can be really big um, and they will stratify. Okay. Um, so if you mix it in nice and slowly throughout the entire process, you're pretty much guaranteed that it'll mix in perfectly and homogenize really well. Okay. One question we get a lot from brewers is how do we clean equipment, brewery equipment, once we've used those strong, punchy citrus uh, flavors, whether it's blood orange or uh, lime zest, something like that. What's the best way that you guys have found cleaning the uh, hoses, the, uh, the tanks, the whole nine yards? Okay. So we, we run a, a typical CIP cycle on everything after we utilize it. Before we do that, we give everything a really good hot rinse. Um, so we'll, we'll put the entire, everything we use in line with our fermenter and give everything a really good hot rinse, get everything nice and clean that way, and then run a caustic cycle okay. through all of it for at least 45 minutes. Okay. Um, we titrate our caustic to make sure it's at our parameters as well. You want it nice and strong, but not too strong. It's not bad if it's too strong, except for that it's really dangerous. Okay. So we, we like to get it to our parameters and uh, we run it for about 45 minutes. And then everything gets a visual inspection afterwards as well okay. to make sure that it's clean. I imagine that protocol is different from brewery to brewery, but I, I assume it probably all still fits. Mm -hmm. It's, it's pretty typical for everyone, but it also depends on where you get your chemical from. Okay. Um, caustic can be different coming from different places. And what we go by what our manufacturers suggest pretty much. Okay. So every day at Amoretti, we make flavor combination recommendations, you know, citrus fruits with hoppy beers, perhaps chocolate, caramel, or coffee with a maltier stout or porter. Uh, what flavor profiles as a brewer could you, uh, I guess for any brewer out there who's not used to uh, you know, making beers that aren't so traditional. Well, it all really depends on how weird you want to get. I personally like to strive for the weirdness. Some, not so much as others. A lot of people tend to use very light fruits with lighter beers and things like that. Or, I mean, when you're getting into the nice cold weather, pairing something like chocolate with a stout is fantastic. 
Okay. Um, like our biggest one is blood orange and a hefeweizen. Okay. It goes together really well. However, we're working on doing a cask of something that has toasted marshmallow in it. Okay. So pastry stuff. Yeah. Okay. And it's nice and sweet and a little weird. It might not be very good, but it's only a little bit. So it's going to be fine. Well, guys, thanks for watching us today. We had a great time at Slow Brew. Hope you did too. Keep in touch. Stay tuned for the next video. Thank you. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked what you saw, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell below to stay up to date on all of our newest videos. See you next time.